Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Welcome to lesson two estimation versus precision. In quantitative reasoning, sometimes you want to estimate to save time, and other times you want to work precisely to ensure you get the correct answer. We will now show you when you should estimate and when you should work precisely. So, why would you want to estimate? Well, the main reason is that it saves time. The UK cat is very time pressured, so estimating can help us work faster. Also, it's easier to use rounded figures and you can do mental maths more easily. And sometimes you can even answer the question by inspection. This is especially true for graph questions. Well, why would you want to work precisely? Firstly, it gets you closer to the actual answer. And there's always a risk with estimation because you might get the wrong answer option if you don't work precisely enough. And if we had unlimited time, we would obviously work precisely for every single question. So it's the most ideal method, time permitting. So when should you estimate? Well, firstly, you should estimate when the answer options are spaced out. If you look at this question on the right, the answer values are separated by several pounds, so you can probably work to the nearest pound. Secondly, the question might use trigger words such as approximate or estimate. This second tip might seem obvious, but we have become so accustomed to seeing these words in exams that often we don't really register them. For example, on this question on the right, did you actually spot the fact that I said approximate or did you skip this out and go straight to the actual important parts of the question? Well, in the exam, you want to make sure you do spot this and be on the lookout for them as the question is trying to help you and save you time. And in contrast, if the answer options are close together or if the question uses triggers such as exact or precise, work precisely. For example, in this question, the answer options are separated by just one pence, so you need to work very precisely. With graphs, you can also estimate or work by inspection. For example, in this graph, they give the units to the nearest 100. So you only need to read to the nearest 25 at the very minimum. You could probably even get away with reading the graph to the nearest 50 here. One thing to bear in mind when estimating is whether you overestimated or underestimated. For example, if the question was 41.25 times 82.3, and instead you did 40 times 80, the sum would give you 3,200. But let's say there's no option for this in the answers. There are only answer choices for B, 3,400, and C, 3,000. Well, which one do you pick? You have to look back at the sum you did, and you will see that you have underestimated. So the real answer is higher than 3,200. So it will be B, 3,400. Likewise, if instead of dividing 80 by 8.4, 8 you did 80 divided by 8, your answer would be an overestimate. So the correct answer is slightly lower. Watch out for division, because if you've gone from 8.4 to 8, it actually leads to an overestimate, not an underestimate, as it does for multiplication. Checking your answer. Well, even if you work precisely, you can still check your answer using rough estimation. You don't have to do any working, but just estimate to make sure your answer is in the right general direction. And it's a very quick and easy test to do. And we'll look through some examples in future tutorials of how you can do this.
Thank you for watching this free Medic Mind tutorial. For £30, you can unlock all 150 tutorials in our online course. The course covers four full days of UK CAT teaching, as well as a course to help you with your personal statement and interview. You're free to ask as many questions as you'd like to our teachers, and with each tutorial, you can read along using our five UK CAT ebooks covering 500 pages of theory and questions to guide you every step of the way.